Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a really new cool plugin called Luminar. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Remedy. I am a French photographer from the beautiful, the incredible, the romantic city of Paris, France. Click here if you want to get the raw files to follow along. All you have to do is sign up on my newsletter and you will get access to some really cool raw files, including skies that we're going to be using in these tutorials. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking here. All right, I want to talk to you about Luminar. Now, Luminar is a Mac-only plugin. Do not throw a knife at me if you're a Windows user. They're working on doing a Windows version, but if you're a Mac user, and if you want to get your photos to places you wouldn't expect, follow me. Okay, guys, so I want to talk to you about Luminar. For now, it's a Mac-only plugin, and I know that upsets some people, but there's a lot of photographers out there that have Mac, and so I'm talking to them. If you don't, they will come up with a Windows version, uh, and they're working on Windows version on Aurora and also on Luminar. It's going to take a few months, but it's going to be there. Uh, you know, the success has been so huge on Mac that, of course, you know, they want to make money and they want to have it on Windows. Don't worry about that. It's coming up. So, what is Luminar? Luminar is a plugin. Uh, I've been working with Mac from products for a couple of years now, and, and they have a, an approach to making software that I really like, really based on layers and presets, and they really t took this to a whole new level with Luminar. You could actually use Luminar as a standalone application to retouch your photos in Lightroom and, and, and use it instead of Lightroom and Photoshop, and in a lot of cases, it could work. Of course, it's not as powerful as Photoshop and not as powerful in certain ways as Lightroom, I find. But it's a great add-on because it's going to take you places you don't expect. And let me give you a few examples. So, for example, this a photo I shot in New York with my buddy Matt Kloskowski a couple of weeks ago when I was at the New York Expo. This is the view from uh, the Inc. 48 Hotel. If you're looking for a cool rooftop in New York, check out the Inc. 48 Hotel. Amazing. So, on this one, you know... I didn't even use the photo. I didn't even use the photo. I didn't put it up anywhere because I didn't know what to do with it. So what I could do is, you know, do my regular rogue flow or open the shadows, bring down the highlights, do a white point and black point. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, the photo is a bit boring. What can I do with this? And this is when I personally go into. I'm, I'm a huge Lightroom and Photoshop user, so, you know, Luminar for me can only be a plugin. I know for some people it's a standalone thing, but for me it's only a plugin. And it's, it's not expensive at all. I think it's around $50 or $60. So... Um, you can actually get a special price if you follow the link under the video, uh, under this video on YouTube. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to edit, and I'm going to go to Luminar, Luminar. It says edit photo with Luminar Bridge, edit a copy with Luminar Adjustments. Yes, so what I did in Lightroom, I want it to be taken into account in Luminar. And the first approach I'm going to do is the most simple one, and actually the one I use the most is the, the layer, the uh, sorry, the preset based. If you cl right click here, you got a, a different set of presets, and I'm going to do some as time goes along. You'll get the third Remedy preset, but for now, you have like basic, street, uh, outdoor. So for example, uh, if you click on basics, here you have little screens there. So you can, it's just like a one trick it's a magic trick just click one and you look at, at, the, at the look of course it's kind of like lightroom preset except that there are things that luminar can do that's impossible to do in lightroom and i'll show you a, a few examples here so you can you just click along and just look how the photo looks and like oh do i like that uh you know uh, do i don't like that let's check another one i'm going to go to streets for example and you know so i spend all this time and what i love is that you have a small preview so I'm like, oh, cold morning could be cool. You know, you can go directly on, on the one that you like. Why not? It's very blue. Uh, Peruvian desert. That's crazy. Peruvian desert. Let's look how it looks. Okay. So that's one idea. Uh, one series that I like is a dramatic series. And um, check it out because it's, you know, I like very processed photos sometimes. So uh, look at this. The dramatic look. One click. No, not, that looks like Batman Begins, you know, it likes, ooh, it's got like sort of sharpening, it's got, you know, desaturation but and contrast, I love it. And uh, artistic copper strong. My, the, my preferred uh, folder is really dramatic ones. Uh, film noir, for example, all right. Uh, cold mood. So it's just, you know, you play around, you look, you like, you know, you have this photo and you're like, where can I go? What can I do to, to make it more interesting? Okay, and oh, 
I kind of like that. I don't like the noise that it makes here on top, but I really love that look. It's called Bloody Mary. Wow, I think it's a cool look. I think that's going to do well on Instagram. So you can click here on Add Filter, and as you go here, you got a, a whole bunch of filter. The philosophy is a little bit like ColorFX Pro if you've used Nick software, which is free, by the way. But it's I find the filters are more interesting in Luminar, and also there is things you cannot do, like a layer, uh, like layers on filters and layer, sorry, mask on filters and mask on layers. I'm going to show this to you. So, for example, here I like this photo, but I don't like the noise in the sky. I want something, maybe, you know, I want something maybe that's going to make the sky a bit uh, more uh, foggy or uh, a little more. Uh, Okay, so for example, I want to do something about the sky here. So I'm going to click on Add Filter, and there is a whole bunch of filters here, a lot bunch. And you actually see a preview of what they do. I'm looking for a filter that's going to sort of diffuse the sky, make it brighter a little bit. And look at this Orton effect. I can see the before and after. And I'm going to show you a few other ones. Okay, and so I'm going to click here. I'm going to click on Amount. And uh, okay, there is two types, Type 1, and I'm going to go to Type 2. Yeah, I'm going to add some softness to it. And I like what it does to the sky, but I don't like what it does to the city. So while it's selected, I can click here on the brush, and I can brush here. And as I brush here, it's going to do a layer mask on the filter and only on the filter. So let me show you. See here, there is a little layer mask. Black conceals, white reveals. So check it out. Before, the effect is only being applied. Sorry, before, after. On the sky, I can go. I can put more amount. I can add some brightness if I want to, and it's only gonna uh, gonna affect the sky. Okay, and uh, voila! I can and I can you know have a brush. I can add the effect here if I want in some locations on the CD to make a sort of a, like a dodging, and voila! So now that filter is being applied. I started with a preset, added one filter, and I did a layer mask just on that filter. Okay, you will see it. it can seem a little complex. I'm going to click on Apply, and I'm going to throw this back into Lightroom. Now, I'm going to go back into Lightroom, and let's take another photo. All right, so I'm going to take another photo. This one is from the Griffiths Park in Los Angeles, California, and I'm going to do, you know, I like the photo because it's got a background, it's got a middle, you know, it's got a, a good, sorry, foreground, middle ground, the background, which is the sky is not so hot, but I like the composition, and I'm like, oh, could I do something? So I'm going to do my usual workflow of, you know, adding some contrast by opening up the shadows, bringing on the highlights. I'm going to clean up a little bit here. Uh, that spot, that spot, that spot. I like that the fact that, you know, the that downtown LA is kind of uh, foggy, I would say, and that the foreground, uh, the observatory is really sharp. I like that. I'm going to maybe add some sharpening, you know, do a bit of masking. But I'm like, oh, I wish I could do something else. Maybe uh, I'm going to do a little auto. Yeah, auto is good. So I'm like, okay, what could I do? What else could I do? Well, I'm going to go right-click, edit, and I'm going to go to Luminar. Click edit. Okay, so let's say that on this one I want to do something more subtle. I can take the basic presets. And then I said, okay, I want to have a base layer that I kind of like. So I'm going to go for, uh, for example, Image Enhancer, you know, and I look what it does. Oh, I like what it does. It's much more warm. It's more saturated. I'm like, yeah, that could be a good base. Maybe a little too much saturation. So if you look here, uh, saturation at 16, I can bring it down a little bit. Okay, so that's my base layer. I like that. Now, uh, let's say that you don't want to learn Photoshop and you want an easy way to replace skies or and it does not work in every situation. By all means, it does not work in every situation, but sometimes it can. You can click here on Layers, Plus Layers, and we have the possibility of adding a new adjustment layer, which we would be using as a preset, or add a new image layer. Okay, on this one, I'm going to have directly a folder called Skies, and uh, I'm going to give you a couple of free skies. For example, I like this one. I'm going to open, and that's going to bring a sky as a top layer, all right? Now, uh, you can, of course, you know, I, I can go, like, sharp and crease. I can do, uh, on, on that layer, I can do some retouching with Luminar, but I can also blend it. I can blend it into a multiply mode, and by doing it on multiply mode, now all of a sudden, it kind of mix up with the other one, and I like that. It's a little too strong, so, you know... Well, I can keep on using, I can keep on retouching it now that it's blended. So, for example, I'm like, it's a little dark, okay? 
it's a little dark so let's see here uh, I can add a filter and this one I'm gonna go to uh, brightness and contrast and I'm just gonna add a bit of brightness and I'm adding brightness to the sky which is blending with the underground okay that's kind of better uh, I still think it's too strong because we have a bit of an of the old sky so one thing you can do also is you can go to that layer which is the original layer and uh, and I can do something here I can make that sky a little brighter you see when you use the blending mode which is multiply when you do that anything which is white is gonna become invisible so I want to find a way to make this a little brighter so I can add a filter there and I can go like uh, maybe I can add like a high key filter you know and boost the high key it's gonna make the whole photo much brighter okay add some glow and I only want it in the sky remember so I'm gonna select the the the, the brush I'm gonna select high key and I'm gonna make my brush big okay and I'm gonna make the sky a little more white especially the top of the sky here all I'm trying to do is make the original sky maybe a little less visible okay now I'm gonna go back on that layer and reactivate it and boom uh, we can see a little bit so what I can do is uh, you can lower the opacity of the sky to just add a bit of clouds we still have the other one maybe I would crop that out but I, I like the fact that I have a little bit of clouds there just a little bit and if you think it's too much so I can take the brush and now I'm on the layer I'm on the layer I'm not on a filter and I can just brush and as I do that I'm just brushing in I'm just bringing part of the effect if I don't like that I can go back in time with undo and go back to the to the layer now I like that uh, I like how I did that and I can keep on working I can just add a new adjustment layer for example and then this time I can go for now I've got the sky in and I can go for example to uh, my uh, dramatic uh, settings and uh, let's see here let's go to uh, uh, mood and answer for example you know or uh, let's go for a vintage look let's click on vintage look and now it's going to apply that preset on the overall photo with the sky kind of crazy I think it's a little too much but I kind of like it so and I'm going to lower the uh, the opacity of that but I kind of like that I think I'm going I'm, I'm going to click on apply and I'm going to go back into Lightroom and do some more adjustment in Lightroom but you see how it just brought me different things or oh, I added some crazy sky so let's go over to Lightroom I'm in Lightroom now I'm gonna crop I don't like the, the original sky here so I'm gonna crop them out and and voila maybe you know in Lightroom I will do uh, like a little gradient here uh, lower the I always like to re retouch in Lightroom you know maybe do one here uh, make sure I'm just on exposure so I'm not adding colors something like this and voila so that's just you know that that's just a place I would have not gone if I didn't have luminar you know adding a bit of clouds doing all this look that's not even included in Lightroom so this one I'm gonna I'm gonna reset it so you can see the before so that's the before photo and and that's the final retouch photo so you know it's just a little it's really cool okay let me show, let me let's do one more let's do one more I'm gonna take this one this is a photo that I, this is a long exposure shot that I took of the Concorde Plaza in Paris while ago I did a bit of retouching if I do the let me show you the before yeah b let me backslash key here so you have the before and the after not much you know I didn't know what to do with this photo you know I like the idea that it's long exposure so most of the cars are invisible so again I'm gonna go edit into luminar and let's see what we can do in luminar so usually what I do is I always like look in the in the basic panel you know I can click here for example I don't detail could be interesting and I'm like yeah I like detail but I don't like what it does on the sky I don't want to get this HDR crazy sky you know I don't like that so let's take another one uh, you know let's let's take um, uh, gloomy morning for example gloomy morning yeah I like what gloomy morning does but now I'm missing all the details here uh, so you know what let's uh, let's just add a filter for example let's see if there is a filter that we, we could add that would bring back a oh, detail enhancer for example okay I can boost the small details I can boost the medium details I can boost the large details how I want and I get this sort of very detailed things uh, I I don't like usually bo boost boosting the small details I like to boost the medium details and the large details highlight protection I can do some masking masking is is like you know Lightroom it's not going to do so much here it's 
going to do it on more details things. Well, there's a bit too much masking here. And uh, let me see. So before and after. So remember, this is applying this everything, you know. Uh, so let's look at the sky. Is it doing something I don't like on the sky? No, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. It's a little strong, so I'm going to lower the values. You know, I just wanted... And voila, so I added a basic thing and I added that. I can continue. I can add... A, this time I can add a new adjustment layer, you know, and then I can go and uh, and go, in, for example, in the dramatic layers, which are always like, you know, ooh, dramatic is very nice. You know, and let's go for, uh, I don't know, like... Uh, uh, enigmatic vision, for example, and you know, and when you click on a preset, you can look on the right and see what they did. You know, enigmatic vision, for example, they added some clarity, they added some alternate effect. That's how they did it. So you can reconstruct it back to what you want. We could go uh, the vintage look again. I think the, I love the vintage look. Okay, now on this one doesn't really work. We can go on the artistic copper strong, for example. Let's see artistic copper strong. Not bad. Uh, but again, I think it's too strong, so uh, uh, or I don't want it everywhere. So I can take a brush now, make my brush big. You can use the right and bracket key on your keyboard to make your brush bigger or smaller. And I can just paint here. And in a second, as you start painting, it's going to create a mask and make everything disappear except where you painted. Voila. And, uh, you know, so, and now I just added that effect just a little bit on the city and not on the sky. So now the photo for me is a bit more interesting, you know, and I can apply. Voila. So basically, you know, the idea of this uh, is to just give it a try. You know, you can get some really, uh, I really, you know, like this cool result. And this is the first time I did this. I did not prepare this in a tutorial. You know, I just, you know, it's like a flow. You know, you go there, you throw photos at it and you just play around with it. And voila, we have a special offer if you're interested in Luminar. Uh, you get a special prize by clicking the link under this video or if you got this as part of the newsletter. I hope you like it. I hope you have, you're a Mac user. You can, you can buy it because it's really worth the money. Uh, it's going to take your photos in places you would not expect.